Welcome to our first video on the probability of mutually exclusive events. In this video, we're going to focus on A, learning to determine when events are considered to be mutually exclusive, B, we will represent these events using a Venn diagram, and C, we will learn to calculate the probability of these mutually exclusive events. All right, so let's start by looking at what it means to be mutually exclusive. So when we talk about mutually exclusive events, we say that these are two events that cannot occur simultaneously. Now, when I say this, this means that if one event occurs, it makes it such that the other event cannot occur. Now, if I look at this visually, I can use a Venn diagram and show sets that represent the favorable outcomes. Because remember, we're talking about probability now. Now, these sets will not intersect with one another because they will not have any favorable outcomes in common. When we draw this out, we're going to see what are called two disjoint sets. That means that the circles are completely separate from one another. An example of a mutually exclusive event might be something like selecting a card from a deck that is either a queen or the number 10. It is not possible for me to select both a queen and a 10 at the same time. Now, when we calculate the probability of mutually exclusive events or the probability of event A or event B, Remember, both of the ev events cannot occur simultaneously, so either one or the other must occur. We can use this equation. So this reads as the probability of event A or B is equal to the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. If you think back to our work on combinatorics or in set theory, hey, remember that that word or generally indicates that we're going to be adding values together. Now, keep in the back of your mind that when we're calculating these probabilities, we are writing a ratio that's going to compare the number of favorable outcomes to the total of the total outcomes for that event. Now, let's dig into an example. The example reads, Eva is about to draw a card at random from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. If she draws an even number or a queen, she will win a point. Now the first part asks us to draw a Venn diagram to represent these two events. And then part B is going to ask us to calculate the probability of winning a point. So let's start with the Venn diagram and we'll come back to part B in just a moment. So to do so, we're going to start by analyzing our problem and determining whether or not the sets are going to intersect. In this game, she will win a point by selecting an even number or a queen. In this case, it is not possible to select a card that is both an even number and a queen. That means that these two sets are going to be disjoint and we would describe the events as being mutually exclusive of one another. So I'm going to draw two separate circles and label each. I'm going to label the left-hand circle with an E, and it's going to represent the favorable outcomes for the first event, which is selecting an even number. Next, I'm going to label the right circle with a Q uh, to represent the favorable outcomes for the second event, selecting a queen. Finally, we can add some numbers to fill in the favorable outcomes for each event. So for event E, we know that there are five even numbers in each suit in a deck of cards, and there are four suits. So there are uh, clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Okay, five even numbers in each suit, which means that there are 20 favorable outcomes for this event. For event Q, or we know that there are four queens in a deck, one in each suit, so there are four favorable outcomes for this event. All right, now that we've got our Venn diagram filled in, it's going to be easy for us to tackle part B. 
Part B asks us to determine the probability of Eva winning a point. Now, if we refer back to the initial problem, it says if she draws an even number or a queen, she will win a point. So essentially, we are trying to figure out the probability of drawing an even number or a queen. Recall that when we use that word or, we must add the possibilities or the probabilities in this case together. That's evident in the equation that I'm going to pull up right now. Now, since these events are mutually exclusive, we simply need to calculate the probability for each event and then add them together. So we've already determined the favorable outcomes for event E, which is the even number. So we said there are 20 favorable outcomes out of a total 52 possible outcomes in the deck. So our probability for event E is going to be 20 out of 52. Then if we move over to the probability of event Q, which is P of Q, then we know there are four possible queens out of 52 total possibilities in our deck. Now, when we add these together, remember that when we add rational numbers or when we add fractions, we're just going to add those numerators together. So we've got 24 out of 52. And when we simplify that, we know that the probability of selecting an even number or a queen is going to be 6 out of 13. So to summarize, in this video, we've first discussed what it means for events to be mutually exclusive. Then we looked at these mutually exclusive events on a Venn diagram where they are represented in two disjoint sets. And finally, we used a new equation to determine the probability of two mutually exclusive events.